All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we are again. I know you guys love story time, so let's continue on with the story. So my life is still going, you know? So after, uh, let's see where we capped off. So you guys gotta kind of look back on or the last uh, dishwashing video that I made. Uh, sorry guys, it might be a little loud just because I'm doing dishes. So if it's a little loud, just turn down the volume and just listen to my soft spoken words. <laughs> <laughs> Alright ladies and gentlemen, so where we capped off, just a little fresher if you guys don't remember, left off at working at Tony Roma's, that was my first ever, ever gig, like that's my, that's the first kitchen gig I ever did in my life, and I still worked at um, uh, Tony Roma's um, while doing other things, so, what was the other things, just let me kind of get everything together, so I left these dishes, like piled up and just like really everywhere just for you guys, right? So we can kind of drag the time, all right? So let's do this, guys. So first things first, let's organize. So uh, first job I got was a dishwasher, right? So if you guys want to look past or look at my past time, just look at my uh, last uh, dishwashing uh, video here, okay? And we start. So what I like to do, just organize. So, if you guys don't like doing dishes, it's because you guys are not organized. You gotta organize first. Just organize it. So, goals, bowls with rolls, match it together. I think that's one thing a lot of people hate. You know, people love cooking, but they really hate cleaning up. So I don't blame you for that, to be honest. Cooking can be a hassle. Or cleaning up can be a hassle, not cooking can be a hassle. Cleaning up can be a hassle. But the best feeling about cleaning up or doing dishes before you go to bed is that you wake up and everything is clean and your kitchen is clean and just feel good, all right? Just imagine waking up to this, you're probably like, where did I start, you know? You don't goof, my friend. You should have washed it last night. <laughs> so. And if you guys are like, on, where's the dishwasher? Dishwasher is right down here, right? It's no good, no good. You know what? I never really realized that a dishwasher only does this. I'll show you. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's what the dishwasher does. Just watch videos of what the dishwasher does. I watched it and I was so confused on how, where's the scrubbing, where's the hands, you know? Where's the hands, the scrub where's the people down there just scrubbing that, you know? You gotta scrub them, okay? You gotta scrub them. So pots, pans, uh, big mixing bowls would be on the side, plates. utensils and uh, cutlery in here, and knives. Nice, all right, plates, see? Now it's more manageable, you see that? Now it's more manageable. Okay, this stuff right here, in the trash, okay. I tell you what, <laughs> I tell you what. I'm gonna throw Mr. Scrubby away. We're gonna pop out a new scrub. It's not a scrub mommy, it's a, no, it's just, it's not a scrub daddy, but it's scrub mommy. If I show you the scrub mommy, if you guys know about scrub daddy, uh, the scrub daddy is only soft, 
But when it comes down to scrub mommy, she has the soft side and the, the bristle side, like very tough side. So that's why I love the scrub mommy. If I could recommend, if I was uh, sponsored by scrub daddy, I would recommend the scrub mommy over the scrub daddy. The scrub mommy has both good sides. So highly recommend this. You know why I highly recommend uh, the scrub mommy or the scrub daddy? It's because it's high quality. Some may say it only lasts, it only lasts a month. Come on, come on. Are, you, are we serious right now? Do we have to get that talk down? What do you mean it only lasts a month? How long is your scrub lasting for? <laughs> well, that's pretty dirty, my friend. That's pretty dirty, all right? It's pretty dirty. I'm talking to you, all right? I'm talking to you, Kevin. <laughs> all right. We got one side clean. Let's go. This is how I like to do my dishes. I always attack the big ones before I go to the plates. Then when I rinse, I rinse right on top of my utensil so they're getting a nice pre-wash. So let's go everybody. Tony Romas. So I still worked at Tony Romas at the time. Wait one second. Let's do this. <clears throat> Let's be honest. I worked for Tony Romas for eight years. Okay, I was at Tony Romas for eight years. Best people I ever met in my life. The most down earth, nicest people ever. Everybody that was uh, worked at Tony Romas was the nicest people I ever met. And we all got along. We all got along. Okay, so. I have never, or I have never, I didn't leave Tony Romas yet, okay? Because I was uh, juggling a lot of jobs. A lot of jobs. When I say a lot of jobs, I was kind of like balancing like three jobs at a time, you know? Okay, next job I went to while balancing Tony Romas, this was morning shifts, and Tony Romas was uh, evening shifts. So there's one, one place, it just opened up. Um, I would not, I would not say the name, but I'll talk about it. Well, the place closed down. <laughs> well, the place closed down, and I knew it was going to close down. I knew it was going to close down, just because the management, okay? This place was a beer restaurant. And I had the opportunity, like I had the best opportunity ever. Not best opportunity, the best experience ever, but kind of bad in a way. But I took it out as something really good. Even though I did, I kind of got played. I got played. Yes, I got played. But I took it as a good work experience, okay? So, let's start. I seen this opportunity. It was just like job hiring. And I was like, okay, I probably could... Uh, squeeze in a f another job um, as a cook. Very confident now because I know how to cook. As a cook, at this one location that serves everything with beer. So everything has beer in it. Okay, crazy, right? Everything has beer in it. Like to their sauces, to um, their batter, to just say it's a beer restaurant. Everything had beer in it. Every ingredient had beer in it. Was it a little waste of beer? Yes, in my opinion. Because you know what? You're like eating something. You're like, oh my God, is that Guinness? Or you're eating something like, oh my God. Like you have like uh, like a burger with ketchup and the ketchup has like a Rickard's red beer in it. Um, then another sauce had Guinness sauce and <laughs> Guinness beer sauce in it. Then the batter had like um, an alley cat beer. Guys, it was everywhere. Like, you're not sitting down just to try food with beer in it. Just say that, okay? It was really good. It was good. It was very tasty. I learned a lot. But I just say, it's a lot of beer to be wasted in food, it's in my opinion, because these beers are kind of like craft beers. And do you know how craft beers are? Craft beers are kind of just like uh, fruity, I say. There's like a lot of fruits and stuff inside. Like, I don't know. My, I myself, I like craft beer, but I find that, like when I drink craft beer, like any type of craft beer now, it's, it's fruity. <laughs> like why is it all fruity? Like why, 
But sometimes I just like kind of want to take like, you know, Budweiser or kind of just like any lager beer and just throw like fruit juices in there and just drink it. And that's, that's, that's the notes, you know, that's the notes. I, that's my opinion. That's why I feel like what um, uh, draft beer is, okay? It's always with some sort of fruit or some notes, you know? All right, let's pass the, that conversation. But yes, opening day, or not opening day, hiring day. I met this man, very nice, very kind. He was actually a very, uh, it was kind of like a mentor to me. Like he was actually, like he was mentoring me through how to open a restaurant. That's how like I, I got that experience of like what to look for and what to do while opening a restaurant, uh, menu tasting, uh, food costs. Pretty much I was the sous chef of that restaurant. Let's just say that I was a sous chef of that restaurant, okay? He put me pretty much as a sous chef at the restaurant, but the weird part of this whole sous chef thing, there was a sous chef, all right? There was a main chef, that was him, and there was a sous chef, okay? And his name was, I know you're watching. You better be watching, okay? He was a sous chef, man. Okay, first start of the day off, uh, this restaurant was kind of like a buy-in restaurant. So there was a restaurant already, and the owner, there was like 10 owners of this restaurant, okay? Let me calm down it, because I want to I wanna talk about everything, about what I've seen of all these 10 owners. I think there was 10 owners, but there was a lot of owners, okay? Maybe under 10, I don't know. Can't really count, but there was a lot. I didn't know who was who, to be honest. But anyways, he hired me. Um, well, the chef hired me. Um, he took me through everything. Like he, he pretty much taught me. It was like me, the chef, and the sous chef. It was three of us. Yeah, it was just only three of us in the beginning for like a month. Yeah, for a month. And when we walked into this restaurant, this restaurant had like the old time feel and we had to clean up. Like every single day I went there early, he gave me like so many hour, overtime hours just to work, to clean, like pretty much clean everything, like scrub. I remember this time, like people were just like, um, you know the fryers? There's like eight fryers, but for some reason the door under the fryer, like when you lift the door up, like open the door, it was like caked on old um, oil. And it was like years worth of oil, you know, like caked on oil. And there's just like, we can't take this out. I don't know what we're gonna do. Then I was like, I don't know. Maybe we could just scrub it. <laughs> then I was like, hey, you can try. And just say, it's only me, the sous chef, and the chef, okay, at this time. And out of the eight doors, I got them all clean, okay? I got them all clean. I scrubbed, I scrubbed forever, and I got it all clean. And he was like, oh, good job. And I was like, I was very proud time in my moment. Yeah, I was like, oh, man. He said it couldn't be done, and I did it. You know, I scrubbed all eight doors, you know? The sucker I am. <laughs> but no, it gave me a good forearm workout. That's why my forearm's so big. Why is my forearm so big? Because of that, just kidding. But anyways, he took me, like he mentored me through everything. Like I felt like I was a sous chef. Like I had pretty much the whole menu on my hands, you know? Like it was so crazy in the beginning. Like I was I'm very grateful for this experience because I learned how to do, um, like, uh, what is that thing called now? I forgot. I learned how to do uh, food costs, uh, inventory. Like, I'm doing inventory. Why is the sous chef not doing inventory? I was doing inventory with the chef, okay? And the sous chef was kind of like any everywhere. I don't know where he went, to be honest. But in the beginning of it, I was doing inventory. Um, I was doing beer inventory. <laughs> I was doing morning uh, taste tests. I was doing, I was pretty much doing everything. Prep work, like I was doing prep work. Like I was doing like the main prep work. But let's just say, I was doing orders. Like guys, this is not my job, but I was very, very um, grateful for learning it, you know? Um, dishes, until they hired a, a disher, which was very nice. Um, but yeah. Great experience. Chef was very nice. But the chef kept not coming in for some reason. I don't know. Like he was never here for some reason, but I actually don't know where he was majority of the time too, but um, yeah, it was going like pretty much 
I was the sous chef. Like he taught me like I was a sous chef and it was amazing. I didn't know what the sous chef was doing. The sous chef, will be honest, I'll tell you right now, the sous chef there was kind of slacking. He was very slacking. Like every morning he was supposed to be there doing soups and sandwich. Like he was supposed to be the guy that do like whip up a soup or a sandwich. For the morning rush. Okay, this is going in now. This is going in. So I was pretty much learning everything uh, uh, under the chef's hat or wing and just kind of learning the ins and outs of opening a restaurant and what to expect uh, opening a restaurant. Okay, so we're in it now. We're in it. Okay. Like I said, I was, I was pretty much, <laughs> let's say that all the work there was me doing it all. So prep work, like, there was a list of prep work from all the sauces because all the sauces like homemade and stuff. So all the sauces, all the chips, uh, all the wings, pretty much everything. And the morning uh, sandwich, soup and sandwich. So I had to like figure something out to make soup and sandwich. And guess what? I, I was just like making the most random soup and sandwich and people liked it. <laughs> and I was like, they're always just like, hey, Kwan, we have ham left. Like there's always ham left. That I don't know what to do. I always did ham and cheese or cheese and ham all the time. Then the sous chef got mad at me. He's like, Kwan, you gotta do something better. Uh, you gotta do something better. You gotta do something better to, uh, you gotta use ham. Like he was telling me I got I gotta use it. Well, he was a sous chef. He was supposed to do it. Like he was the guy that was supposed to open and be the main event of like the soup and sandwich and the prep work. But I was the guy. I was the guy. Well, I just wanna say he got on my nerves. <laughs> he got on my but I just wanna say, um, like I said, great experience and everything, but I even bought a book. I even bought a book from my favorite chef. So I'm gonna promote it right now. Like my favorite chef, he's a very famous chef from PEI, Prince Edward Island, St. John's. And every morning I woke up watching this man back in grade six. You know, chef at home, you guys Google chef at home. This is the man, this was my ASMR every morning. But the thing about this, and I'm not promoting or anything, but I just wanna say, if I want promote, I promote him. He was my chef. He was my chef. He was my go-to guy every morning. So every morning, I turn on his, his 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 show was always on. He was my chef ASMR. Like it was so relaxing, so smoothing, and he's a great chef. And this is who I look up to. One day I'll meet him. One day I'll meet him. Right? And uh, make him sign my book <laughs> that I bought. But uh, I was just saying. Um, just because he wasn't, or uh, the sous chef wasn't standing up, I had to buy these books because I didn't know how to cook. You know, I knew how to follow. I didn't know how to cook back in the day, but that man's amazing. Yeah, okay? I just want to say that man is amazing just because um, me waking up to him and me passing out while waking up to him just to go to school. And pretty much I don't make it to school because of him because he makes me sleepy, you know? It's so peaceful. Look at this. I still don't even have the, the stickers on it too. So uh, this is not his book. This is another book. Um, but I bought a long time ago from Deborah Mehi, but it's called the Soup Bible. And look at this. I didn't know how to make soup back in the day. And look at this. And this was my inspiration on how to make soup, you know? And pretty much I have like sticky tags all around. And I was like serving uh, people's soup <laughs> from this recipe. But, <laughs> but now I know how to cook soup and I understand about soup. But thank you, uh, Deborah Mayhew for teaching me how to make soup, right? This is your book, all right? So if you guys wanna learn how to make soup, make soup, all right? But yeah, that's where I started, okay? You're watching, you little two tires. <laughs> Just kidding. I forgive you, okay? I forgive you. You're lazy though. You're very lazy, I just wanna say that. Super lazy, okay? I was doing your job, all right? I was actually was doing your job, 100%. Like, the cook's there. Like, as the restaurant was going, the cooks there thought I was a sous chef. I was like, no, it was not me. They're like, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, so I just wanna point that out. He was a jerk. He was nice in the beginning and he became a jerk. He only came became a jerk when the dinner rush came, you know? I remember 
uh, I stayed for the dinner because usually I was the morning guy in the the lunch and and kind of like the evening like I'm out when the dinner rush comes because I I go there I do all the prep work I see what's down I have to make it um, uh, clean dishes and just get ready for lunch and that's pretty much it and continue on prep but there's one time I stayed for the dinner rush and this guy got mad at me like he like he went full blown he went full blown out like pissed off do you know for what for somebody not putting the ketchup on the fries and he yelled at me i was like wow this guy went chef ramsey on me over uh ketchup and i was like okay this guy ah i understand him now now i understand him this guy thinks he's chef ramsey <laughs> so back to the story um I was a prepper guy. Let's just say I was a prepper guy. This guy was always late. Always. He was always late. The sous chef and the chef. <gasps> like, it was only me. Like, I, I didn't understand what was really going on because I was new. Like, in the beginning when the, when the opening was going, it was me. It was the chef and the sous chef. Then when they opened and everything was going, the chef, the main chef, disappeared. I know, I'm not even sure where he went, but he later got fired because he uh, missed a lot of absence. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> it was kind of weird because when they opened, they, they all disappeared. So it, it pretty much became like this. The chef disappeared for like, I don't know, a month or, like he was like on, off, on, off, and he just, he just like, he said he was doing things, but I didn't understand what he was doing. So he left. Then the sous chef was always late. Then it was just me. So it was kind of like a weird combo going on. But then they hired another guy. And there was uh, his best friends. Like the chef's friends and the sous chef's friends. They hired him uh, in for a helping hand. And guess what? He became sous chef number two. <laughs> So I was like, how did he become sous chef number two while just coming in, you know? I was here since the beginning. How did he become uh, sous chef number two? Like, they, they honor him sous chef number two, you know? So I was like, how does that even work? I don't understand. But then it was going. Now I was like, hey, this just seems just a little weird now, okay? I'm not sure what they're trying to do. Maybe trying to, like, when they get everything in together, then they just kind of want to fire you. So they do these things for you to kind of, like, see that, hey, we don't need you anymore, big boy. It's time to go. So um, the restaurant was going. Then I was just, like, to the manager one day, or the sous chef. I was like, hey, uh, I think I was there for, like, six months. Then I was like, hey, um... I'm always here in the morning. I was talking to the sous chef. I was like, I'm always here in the morning where I'm doing your work. You're always late for some reason. Uh, is it possible for me uh, just to get a raise? Because that time, I think I was making $10, $10 an hour or nine fifty, you know, around there. I was like, why am I doing all of your work? Like, why am I doing inventory? Like this, like the sous chef was kind of like, like, observe 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 i'm not sorry observe like he's just like yeah but you know i was like this is your job like you're supposed to do this i'm just supposed to be the guy that comes in and just kind of uh like pick up on from where you set up you know like usually a sous chef go in they'll make like the the list they'll look into inventory they'll count what we need uh what we have to make uh what has to be done in the beginning like he was supposed to be opening, you know? He he was the opening guy because he's a shoe chef, right? I was like, why am I doing it and making this mount while you're getting a salary? I was like, can I get a, a raise? Come on. Maybe like a dollar or two? <laughs> and he's like, he, he actually got mad. Like, I told him out. I told him out. He actually got mad. He's like, I'll talk to the chef. He's like, but just look at this. You're not, I don't think you're going to get it. Then I was like, okay, can you just ask him? Like, he was pissed off. And then, 
He's just like, yeah, you're not going to get it. And then he's like, the chef said, you're not going to get it. And I was like, okay. I was like, I think I'm just going to give him my two weeks. Uh, I just don't think it's fair that I'm, I'm the sous chef and you become this guy just sitting on a salary and coming in anytime he wants. Then I was just like, yeah, I think I'm just going to. I was gonna quit right now, I guess. <laughs> then he got so mad. He got really mad. Yeah, he got very mad. But the chef wasn't there. <laughs> so I was like talking to him. So it was kind of weird. It was like kind of a weird thing. But then I was just like, okay, I guess I'll just leave. Then I still remember this time too. He's like, okay, Con, you're gonna, you're gonna regret this. I was like, regret what? <laughs> I was like, what? I was like, I'm, I'm doing your job. Like, why am I regretting? I was like, I actually took in a lot of good experience, and I kind of just want to leave it as it is and just be on my way of next new things. He's like, then he shrugged it off. Then I was just like, okay, okay, bye. Then I left. Then the the chef there, he's like, he was kind of disappointed that I had to leave. Or to be honest, I think he, I think he got fired. Yeah, the chef got fired before. Uh, no, the chef got fired first. Then I was talking to the shoe chef. That's pretty much it. Then um, the manager uh, called in. He's just like, "Hey, Kwan, just come in and grab your last check." And I was like, "Okay." The manager, the first manager, is very nice, very very kind. But then he was just like, "Come in and grab it anytime, whenever you're free." And I was like, "Okay." Then I remember just going there. I went to the back. Like, I always thought, like, going to the back was the place, like, the back door. Then he looked at me, he's like, he's like, you can't come back here. I was like, why? He's like, because you don't work here no more. <laughs> okay. I was like, I guess I'll go to the front. He's like, yes. Then I go to the front. Then the manager, I, I saw the manager, went to the front. The manager's like, yeah. He's like, why didn't you come to the back? And I was like, because they let me. I was like, oh. <laughs> I was like, oh, what the heck? Then the manager took me back. Then I saw him again. I was like, hey, what's up? <laughs> then he was just like, I was like, what's the point of that? But that place is kind of weird in a way too because the management was a little weird as well. Um, there was actually like, I think it was 10 managers. I think it was 10 managers, but there's like one really main guy and that's about it. And I talked to the one really main guy and he gave me my last check there. All right, the manager in there. So the one main guy was very kind, very nice. I actually forgot his name, but he was very, yeah, he was very kind, just very kind. I think he was just like kind of, it seemed like this manager was kind of just like in it for the financial in my opinion, because he was just doing the financial and there was like other other owners and all these other owners that he hired, maybe his friends or whatever, was all, I'm gonna say it, were all drunks, okay? I said it, they were all drunks. Like drunks meaning, like they always came back to drink beer. <laughs> so there was like two coolers, one cooler for the beer, one cooler for the food. And they always, like these two, I still remember these two managers always came back for beer. Like, you guys are working, even in the morning. They always come back for beer, always. And their excuse every time I see them every morning to get beer, they're like, we gotta taste and we gotta, uh, they're, like, they're saying just like, they gotta taste it for the customers so they can, uh, uh, broadcast it or kind of just like, um, what's that word? I'm mixing Vietnamese and English together again. What's that word? Guang Gao. What's Guang Gao? Guang Gao is. Man, I don't know what the word Guang Gao in English is. Well, they had to um, promote, promote. So every day, so let's cap it back. This was a beer restaurant, okay? And it had plenty of beer. They had 
a lot of import beers, like tons and tons and tons of beer. Like a lot of import beers, a lot. Every morning, every afternoon, and every evening, I seen them going back, grabbing a beer, a new beer every time. And this lasted forever, and they're always having a beer, right? They're always having a beer. I see them, always having a beer. And I thought, oh, I guess, just because it is a beer restaurant and they have to do it. But these guys were drinking. <laughs> they were drinking. It was the same guy too. Um, maybe it was my bad, I didn't know. But this guy, I still remember his name. Man, he always had an attitude. For some what reason, I don't know. He always had an attitude. And he's always drinking the beer. <laughs> always. Every time I see him, he's always drinking the beer. And the, the other manager, too. Not the main guy. The other one. I don't know if you guys are watching. See, as a guy that sits in a restaurant and just kind of, like, do everything and just kind of, like, there 24 7 you see it you see it right and here i am explaining it to you guys or telling you guys but the restaurant is closed now they still have their logo out i would say the restaurant but nah they had a really good thing going too i really liked it beer food or beer items you know what was I saying? Yeah, that's pretty much about the the management. That's it, in my opinion. Always see him drinking beer. Always. Right, that's dishes with Kwan. <laughs> Join me again next time for new adventures.